I know you. You're like most musicians, where you're looking at other musicians and going, Why do they keep moving faster than me and passing me by and how many fans they have? And here's the thing. I'm the person who studies how musicians go from zero to millions of fans more than literally anyone on the internet. And I noticed in the last two years, almost no musicians get that the whole game changed. And one of the things I see that gives me a lot of hope for all of you is that you're often just a few steps away from getting it. If you change some little things that you're doing wrong, all of a sudden, you start to have those big breakthroughs to start turning small numbers into bigger numbers. Which is why I wanted to make this video, because I really have uncovered a way of explaining one of the main things I see that makes people's musical aspirations fail when they're putting tons of work in and it's just not being effective. And seriously, this is like 95% of you who are thinking of this wrong, and every time I point it out to somebody, they start doing way, way, way better. So come along with me while I rewire your brain to the way people are breaking their songs today, not how you've been promoting music for the last 10 or more years. So in order for you to understand this, we have to first talk about how we've been promoting music before this. If you recall, for the last 15 years, all you've wanted to do is get followers or subscribers or likes on Facebook or whatever. Starting in 2003 till 2008, it was on MySpace, you want followers to read bulletin board messages. You put a new song up and then listen to it in your profile. Then from 2009 or around 2012, you want Facebook likes and you were trading people being able to listen to your song in a terrible sounding player for people to give a like to you, which is the stupidest marketing era for music promotion ever. Then for some reason in 2013 to 2015, we had a brief time where we were trying to get Instagram followers who uh, couldn't even stream your music on the platform and you had to get past everyone's pictures of avocado toast to get noticed. What? And since then we've been in the Spotify and YouTube era for nearly a decade and now we're trying to get monthly listeners, which at least is a lot better, and YouTube subscribers, which mm, we'll get into. And of course we had recently in the last two years, we entered the earworm era, which is a term I coined for that we're now in an era where we get people to listen to short snippets of your music and then come over to a streaming platform to listen to more of it. But the thing is, that's not totally right because I have to tell you, I think everybody's been sleeping on that. It's all actually changed a little differently in the last two or so years. And we're in the earworm era, but there's also something a little bit different going on. And that's that we're in the for you era. And I'm gonna explain that in just a second. So in all those old models, you were always talking to whoever followed you. But the weird thing with for you pages and browse pages and algorithms is that if you get past algorithmic jail, well, all of a sudden you're getting shown to lots of strangers and more strangers than followers are actually seeing your video. And even when people like you, they don't always follow you. And that's a new behavior. But let me show you what I mean. On TikTok, the For You page is way more popular than the following page. A lot of you probably didn't even know it existed. On YouTube, most people don't look at their subscriptions page. Instead, they look at the front page or they scroll on their phones till they see something they want to watch or one of their friends is sending them a video, often of somebody they've never watched before. I can see this in my analytics along with the nearly 1,000 musicians analytics I've looked at over the years. And they all look pretty much the same, that a little bit more non-subscribers than subscribers are watching them. In fact, Odds are, those of you who are watching this right now don't subscribe, and frankly, you should fix that. On Spotify, if you look at your analytics and you have any amount of listeners, you probably know that you're mostly being played in algorithmic playlists like Release Radar, Discover Weekly, or other algorithmic programming for people's individual musical tastes. On Instagram, the Explore page has always been where FOMO lives and scrolls happen and where much of the consumption comes from, or through reels, which are just like TikToks, where you're seeing complete strangers all the time, and the same goes for YouTube Shorts. And this even goes over to the text apps, like Twitter or Threads. Twitter pushes the For You page, so Elon can push all his dumb memes down your throat because he thinks he's funny. And over on Threads, here's the funniest one. You have to press this button here to see the following page because they don't want you to use it. Oh yeah, never notice Spotify is pushing their new feed page, which is a For You page, and they want you to listen to their stupid AI DJ that gives the worst energy of a robot doing the hello fellow kids meme. Well, that's also basically a For You page. Basically, they have data that proves they know you better than you know yourself, and they're acting on it. And if you're like me, that may not be the case, and we're the outliers. You may not listen as long when you use those things, but the fact is, we're built different and not everyone is as special as us. And by special, I mean probably poisoned by an obsession with music that breaks the robot's brain and it can't do better than us. But that's not most people. But you're probably wondering why do they want to make you watch this For You page instead of who you choose to follow? That seems bad, right? Well, I have a secret for you. I've gotten to talk to some of the people who make the algorithms of these apps, mostly because they love to come up to me and talk to me about their music career and then want to impress me and tell me they work on the algorithm of an app and then I pick their brain by getting them, well, drunk as all hell. 
Sorry if you're watching this for that hangover. And the scary thing that they tell me every time I've talked to someone about this is that if they can keep you on the For You page instead of the following page or the equivalent, you'll stay on the app two, three, four, sometimes five times longer depending on the user of the app. And this explains the number one question people with fans on Spotify ask me about the app. Why won't Spotify just tell people when I release a new song with one of those alerts like Showcase and Marquee? Buddy, they don't want to tell somebody when your new releases are out because then you get to control when you alert them. That would give you the power to have them recommend a song, then hear a crappy song if you made a dud, and then leave the app since, let's be honest, a lot of musicians make duds. If they can show them who the algorithm thinks they should listen to, well, they're gonna keep that user on the app longer, and that's every app's goal, because then you keep paying for it or using it and seeing ads. Plus, Spotify are disgusting predators and learned they can sell desperate musicians, marquee and showcase tools, and now they can use those tools to take money from you, which sadly work really well at promoting your music, so sadly we have to use them. And they basically sell you that right in exchange for lowering their user's time on the app when someone does bail on the app after listening that terrible song you wrote about the streamer girl who plays weird video games while talking about her cute outfits you thought you were going to impress with your terrible attitude ukulele. Anyway, since those apps goals are to get people who've never seen your content to stay around longer because they know it's best for them, you have to make something that they think is best for them, which involves knowing a lot of best practices. And I know a lot of you are getting bummed out right now thinking there's no way you can do that. But honestly, when you learn a few simple rules, it's very easy to one, find the audience that's most likely to like your music, which funny enough was what one of my last videos was about. So if you don't know how to find the people who are most likely to like your music, who are passionate about hearing new music, well, that's gonna be linked at the end of this video. So you're in luck. So you just have to hit the next video or go to the description and click on it. But secondly, it's to package it in ways that they would like, which is what I was trying to get at at the start of this video. And now you know enough for me to explain the main thing everybody's messing up on these apps is that they're talking as if they're talking to their followers not strangers. And there's some things you can do to change that that are really easy. And what I mean by this is you're not giving people who don't know who you are enough context. They don't even do the bare minimum of posts where they say something like, Hey, if you're new here, I'm making music for the fans of the 1966. And I get it. I find those videos corny too, but there's a reason the people who make those do well and you're hating on them is because who they're talking to is strangers. And we, while you're making videos that say, never ending song part 71, you wanna know what no one wants to f***ing hear? A never ending song or part 71 of a thing they haven't gotten into yet. They feel like they have to go backwards in time and learn all that stuff to understand it. Why would they want that? Your continued story that people are jumping in the middle of is not interesting. No one likes watching a movie for the middle, except for every girl I dated who took too long to get dressed before I met my wife. Anyway, so there's a very simple thing you could do whenever you're making content. I want you to think of an imaginary fan that you could potentially win over who's never heard your music. They could be whoever you could think of, but they should probably be a person you think you really understand really well. And then you're thinking, what could I say to them if they've never heard me before that would make them interested in what I'm about to show them? And and that will change with every post, but getting them up to speed with each post is one of the most crucial thoughts. And this is why we do things like have cultural signifiers around you, like stickers or certain haircuts that show you're in a genre. You're basically in as few words as possible, as quick as possible, trying to say that they're in the right place for the type of music they like. We don't want paragraphs here, Chief. But some of you are thinking, I trust you, can not actually be that simple, can I? No, of course not, which is why I make so many videos on how you get your music heard on these short form apps. But this is really the biggest mistake I could see. 60% of, if not 80% of the videos I scroll on in a given night doing, is they don't introduce the audience to why they would be interested in this. So that's why those POV videos that some of you hate, or those videos that say what type of music it is, or something that says what type of band you are and the one-liner of why you're interesting is. Even if something simple for we make bar rock while you're playing billiards, or I make bangers that make you want to take your clothes off. It could be real simple. Just get something in there to get people up to speed. But then so many of you say what about my existing fans dude they're fans that means they like you enough to sit through a lot of bullshit think about how much bullshit you probably sit through of your favorite artists they often don't even notice these things because they already know what you are and yes there's always one person who's going to complain about everything in the comments literally one of the things you learn as you go through music promotion is there will be 
a bunch of people who complain about everything to a scale of how many fans you have commenting, even if you do the most perfect thing ever. Charlie XCX just did the greatest album rollout of all time. Look through every good event of that rollout that was widely praised by almost everyone, and there's a thousand losers in the comments saying it was terrible, and to stop putting that hideous album cover everywhere. And guess what? They're provably wrong. As you can't think of an album rollout that did more of taking an artist from a certain level to a bigger level than that one in recent times. And if you want to learn more about that album rollout and why it was so good, I have an issue of my newsletter, Music Marketing Trends, all about it, and it's free, so sign up in the description. But anyway, talk to the strangers first, then have it figure out how to do a balance once you have enough of followers that you're giving some stuff to them too. And this also goes for repetition, and this is one of the main things I have to teach on my member feed every single week, which by the way, for $5 a month, you get over six hours of videos every month where I explain the latest social media trends, answer your questions, and listen to your music, and give critiques to it, and dissect how the biggest artists in the world are blowing up from zero fans to now making their dreams come true. I also do Q and A's and once a month I listen to any songs my members submit of their music that they want me to listen to. So you should really tap in there and there's a link in the description. I know a lot of you're saying that it can't be all there is to it, but really this is the thought that a lot of people use and when you look at some of the biggest artists, scroll through artists that you really like on TikTok, they're probably doing a lot of posts where they get people up to speed fast on what they're about. And take from those artists and look how they do that and you'll start to do better on these platforms. But if you want to learn how to find your first fans, like I mentioned, there's a video on the screen right now that really gets you up to speed on how to find them in the algorithm and what to post in the first post you put out when you first put out a song. And that's on the screen right now or in the description. Thanks for watching.